for us and that's died on the cross for our sins. You have given us the opportunity, Lord, to have an eternal life. And I'm going to thank you for that today. I'm going to praise you today for that, Lord. Lord, I'm going to worship you today. Amen. And I'm going to give you my all, God, because you gave me your all. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church. We're here for a reason. We're here to magnify the Lord. And no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what the situation may be, amen, we can put that aside right now. Amen. And have freedom in worshiping and praising the Lord. Amen. If you're with us, if you believe me, amen, then let's do what we came to do. Amen. our hands and begin to talk to the Lord this morning. God, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, we come to make a joyful noise unto the Lord today.
to walk by sight. Hallelujah. But I'm going to walk by faith, believing that sometimes I can't see what he's doing. But he's still working. He's still moving. If I can believe him, when I cannot see it, praise God. He'll bring it to pass. That's the way God works. At some point, God says, you have to trust me. At some point, God says, there's not going to be a banister. There's not going to be something for me to lean on. But I'm just going to have to trust him. And in every life, that trust factor just gets raised higher and higher. You never get to a point that you just, you pass that test and you never get it again. Even Abraham, at the end of his life, or nearing it, was tested in a way that he never thought he would be. God says, sacrifice that son. Praise God. God is always faithful. Praise God. Your light is greater, you light our way, God, you light our way. The evil is rising, you're rising higher, with power to save, with power to save.
just as I am. Empty-handed but alive in your hand. Majesty. You're in His presence, hallelujah. In the presence of your majesty Amen. Sometimes we're, amen, we're not vocal about those things. Amen. Because sometimes it's so personal, it's so deep. We don't know really what to do about them. We just say, hey, we're just going to try to make it to the end the next day. And we just live with this stuff that's eating up at us. Amen. When you can just take it to the Lord. Amen. The Bible lets us know that he's there. Amen. Even before you even utter those words out your mouth. He knows your heart. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God knows what's going on in your situation? Sometimes even before you know what's going on. Amen. And if he knows, guess what? He's able to deal with the situation better than you are if you had the power to do it. Amen. That's what I love about God. He knows the beginning and the end. He knows the situation that we're in right now, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Health. Amen. Physical needs, financial needs, amen. Situations going on in your family, amen. personal problems. He understands all that. He knows all of it. Yeah. And the best person to give you help is the person that knows all about it. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's why I love the Lord because He has never failed me. Amen. amen. I deal with situations in my life that I think is deep and, and that nobody cares about it. And it's just something I got to deal with. But guess what? When I take those things to God, He gives me that peace Amen. that surpasses all understandings. I can't explain it. I just know that I feel peace. Amen. And it's just to say, Dave, I got your back. Yes. Amen. You're not going through this alone, and I see what you're going through. Right, right, right. And I'm going to take care of the things Amen. ahead of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just give God a hand clap of praise for being there for us. Amen. We're here today. Amen. Just to tell them we love them. Right? 
Amen. You don't have to come to church and say that. You can do that wherever you are. But together, collectively, we're here to have church, guys. Amen. We're here with one another to pray with one another, to pray for one another. Amen. I said to pray for one another. Amen. Amen. Whatever I got on in my life, yes, I can pray for my needs. But I feel a lot better when I know that my brothers and sisters are praying for my needs as well. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Things get done in numbers. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. And today we want to do that. We want to go to God in prayer. Because we understand that God not only hears us. Amen. We believe that. He hears us, right? Yes. But watch this. He answers us. Amen. Amen. At least I believe that. Amen. The Bible tells us. Praise God. And we should all have an experience with God to say, you know what? I have prayed in the past and God has answered those prayers. So this is why we can go back to him again because he, we know that he's faithful. Amen. How many of us here today have a need? Amen. Amen. Just a couple of us. Amen. Praise God. Well, God's going to take care of those couple of us that need, to, need his help. Praise God. Amen. Nobody has a perfect, easy life. And because we don't, we're going to have problems, right? We're going to have needs, right? We're going to have battles, struggles, amen, trials, tribulations, amen. But we need to just take it to the Lord in prayer. That's what we want to do. Anyone? Amen. Go ahead, sis. Pray for my daughter. She's going to have to take care of me and my brother-in-law. We're both having surgeries in April. Yes. And my daughter's She's dealing with a lot right now. They didn't give her her seizure medicine, so she's without it for two days. Yes. And that could bring on really bad Yes, yes. Because she's been seizure free for 120 days. Woo. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we want to keep it that way, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Let's just remember Sister Janice. Amen. Amen. Let's pray that God would take care of her. Amen. So she can take care of her parents. Amen. Praise God. Go, go, go. Yes. In the back of my neck. I'm yes. in pain like almost every day. I can't really show it. Yes. But I'm in pain. Yes. Affects all my shoulder by my rotor cuff, everything. Yes. It just hurts. And recently, I lost my hearing in my ear. Mm. So, yes. Praise God. Yeah. One more. Yeah. One more thing to pray about, right? <laughs> Amen. Yes. Let's remember our brother Ralph. Amen. Sounds like Amen. you're going through it right now. Amen. 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 Just come forward. Anyone that needs prayer in their bodies, please come forward. Amen. So we can uh, lay hands on you and pray for you this morning. Anyone else has a, a need that they want the church to pray for? Sis, did you have something? I'll just pray for my family. Okay, just her family. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Big deal. Some of the family need salvation. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Big deal. We want to see them saved. We want to see them in church. We want to see them, amen, on their way to heaven. Praise yeah. God. Let's remember the, the um, Estrada family. Yeah. Praise God. Anyone else want to petition God this morning? Praise God. Heavenly Father, you see it all and know it all. We're not bringing any brand new news to you today, God. Nothing we're saying here today is a surprise to you. Nor today, we have needs. Today, we have hope in you that you are able to take these needs, God. Lord, and take care of them. Lord, I pray today, God, for Sister Janice, that you see these needs that she has. Lord, I pray that you would help her, God, through her battle, heal her, help God. Lord, the battle through her. Lord, her physical needs, Jesus, God. Thank you. I pray that you would take care of right now. She can take care of her family, God, as they're about to go into surgery, Lord. Lord, these are small things, maybe, in our eyes. Lord, but in your eyes, it's a big thing, God, because you care for each and every one of us. Lord, you have an answer, God, for each and every one of us. Lord, you have a plan for each and every one of us, Lord. I pray, God, for the Estrada family. I pray in the name of Lord, you know God the needs. I pray for all her constant uncles and aunts, God, as well, Lord. I pray that you would bring them back to I pray that you would give him revelation this morning. Help him to see God that he needs you. And Lord, Lord, without you, God, Lord, Lord, he's lost. Lord, I know, God, we have family members who are in this building, God. Lord, that needs salvation, God. I pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, Lord, to understand where our help comes from, God. Lord, help us never to give up, God. Lord, to never give in to the enemy, God. Lord, but to give you, God, Lord, everything that we can. We can give you, Lord, all our faith, God. And we know that you're going to answer us. We know you're there, and we know, God, that you're going to give us, Lord. Lord, what our hearts desire, God, if we believe in you and trust in you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Amen. God's good. Amen. I say God's good. Amen. Even if you don't feel that way to support him. He's good. Amen. Even though you had a bad week, even though situations came across your, 
your weekend has maybe been a surprise to you. And listen, you might have battles that you're going to go back home to when you leave here. Amen. But right now, let's make sure we're giving our undivided attention to God. Amen. Let's make sure that God is our priority while we're here today. Amen. When you start to sacrifice your time to God, amen, it's going to not go unrewarded. Praise God. God's going to see what's going on in your life. And I believe it's those that sacrifice are those who lift the answers. When you sacrifice your time, and listen, we have all house prayer tomorrow, right? Amen. A lot of people are busy. A lot of people have to work. A lot of people coming to work, going to work. Amen. A lot of people have different schedules. But I'm going to just put this out there. Tomorrow is all house prayer. And what we say, what we mean by all house prayer is we are opening the doors up for everyone tomorrow night to be in service, or not service, but in a prayer service tomorrow night. Amen. Amen. Don't brush it off. Amen. Because if you have needs here today, we're praying for you today. We're for your family. We're praying for everything about you today. Listen, when we come into an atmosphere tomorrow, everyone is praying about your needs. Amen. We we have experienced great breakthroughs when we have prayer services here at the church. Amen. So don't just brush it off. Amen. Let's sacrifice. Remember? Sacrifice your time to make it to church tomorrow. Amen. For our all house prayer meeting. Let's take it serious. Amen. Because when we have needs, we don't just go to God saying, God, eh, it'll be okay if you did this for me. No, we're going to God expecting a move of God in our life. Amen. I expect God to intervene when I pray. Amen. I don't have time to pray to someone that does not hear me. I don't have time to pray to anyone that doesn't care about my needs. Amen. I don't have time to pray to someone who doesn't have the power to answer. Praise God. I expect God to answer when I pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Enough of that, right? Amen. Let's switch things over to tithing and offering. Amen. God's been good to us. Amen. We want God to continue not to only be good for the church, but to you in your home. Amen. We know the struggles of across the board, not just here, but across this country where finances is a big situation in everybody's life, right? Amen. Praise God. I'll raise my hand on that one. Amen. But I can tell you this, guys. God has been faithful. God has been faithful to me, to my family. Amen. God has been faithful, amen. Because you know what? I expect him to. Amen. That's the key. I expect God to be faithful. Therefore, he is faithful. And when I say I expect, there's things that I do to make sure that I show God that I am faithful and I expect him to intervene in my life. Amen. One is paying tithes. I do pay my tithes. Amen. Amen. Because I know that when you're giving tithes, amen, it is a sacrifice. And we're not doing it for a stingy reason. We're doing it because we want, amen. Amen. We want to be, first of all, obedient to what God has asked us to do. Secondly, we understand what. Amen. Tithes is not just going to someone's pocket just to lie in their pockets. It's actually going for the kingdom. Right? Amen. Tithes is going for anything that this church is doing for the kingdom. Amen. Whether it's paying the bills of the church, the, the rent of this church. Amen. Tithes goes for a purpose. So if we're being obedient, amen, this church is going to have a amen, successful future. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. How many want to pay our tithe cheerfully today? Amen. Amen. The Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So we don't want to just throw it in like, oh, I wish I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I need that to buy some whatever. Some can't can later on today. Amen. Some gum. Listen, forget about the stuff we need to buy, and let's focus on what we ought to do for the church. Amen. It's something between you and God. Amen. And we just want to give you the opportunity today to, 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 to give unto the Lord. Amen. You can do it online. Amen. Great. Uh, GreatCommissionPC.org You can go there, push the donate tab and do whatever you need to do online. But today, amen, we just want to open up for you today. Lord, we love you today. This church, Lord, is focused on one thing, and that's making you happy. Lord, if it's not making you happy, Lord, please correct us. Chasten us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to make the right decision, Lord, so that you can have favor for this church, God. Lord, whatever we put out to do, whatever our hands are doing, Lord, I pray that you would, Lord, bless it. I pray, Lord, that all those that we are talking to, all those that we are witnessing to, all those that we are, who are pinning seeds in their life, God, Lord, I pray that you will give the increase. 
Yes, Lord, we know, God, that you're good at that. Change and rearranging hearts. We're going to bless you, God. Lord, because you have blessed us. We bless your holy name today. Bless all those that are given. In your name we pray. Can everyone say amen? Amen. 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 Come and give up to the Lord. Let's shake hands with one another. And let them know that you're happy that they're in the house of the Lord today. Amen. with us on March 26th. We're looking forward to that. That is next Sunday? Next Sunday. Yes. All right, look forward to it. Uh, you service on March 31st. He'll also be with us that evening as well. Uh, we want everyone to attend the youth service. You're all young at heart. I know I am. I'm about 15. If you ask how I act. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I look it, but you know, I act it. So. Um, we have Arizona Youth Convention coming up on in April, on April 13th and 14th in Tucson, or, or Tucson as I like to say. <laughs> May 11th through the 13th is Men's Conference. Um, we'll post uh, more information and group me on that as well. Um, and uh, camp registration for senior camp uh, starts tomorrow, ages 13 to 25 for youth camp. Get with um, Sister Cheyenne or um, yeah, just Sister Cheyenne. <laughs> uh, 
Other than that, we have um, junior camp coming up May 22nd through the 26th. Um, we're going to get more information on that in a little while. We're going to have Sister Johnson come up and make some special announcements for the ladies. Um, before I get to the ladies, I also want to talk about, um, this is, we got this in the mail, it is a Save Our Children offering, and um, it's, they're doing it the same way they did the other ones with the cards. They go from a dollar all the way up to a hundred dollars. You can take a card, fill out the information on the back, and turn that in if you want to give an offering for Save Our Children. The offering date is April the 9th. Uh, Save Our Children helps to support um, this district. 50% of the money raised goes to, it stays in the district. It supports Bible quizzing. It supports Holy Ghost rallies and crusades for the kids. It supports North American missions. So it also supports, there's an orphanage in Haiti that it supports, uh, disaster relief, train up conferences. So there's a lot of things that it supports. Uh, Save Our Children supports and I'll lay these cards out so you can just take one. Like I said, the offering goes from a dollar all the way up to a hundred dollars. So whatever you feel in, uh, in your heart to give, you can give that. You don't have to turn them in to me today. Like I said, the offering date is April the 9th. So if you want to do it anytime between now and um, before April the 9th, you can uh, return them to me. Ladies, they gave us information for us. Uh, find it on Facebook. Some of you may have already seen it. Um, the ladies conference, it is called Treasures. And it is July the 20th through the 22nd. They changed the um, location. It's usually at the um, Hilton in Mesa. This time it's going to be at Marriott in Chandler, right off of Price Road, which is right off the 202. So they're having it there. Uh, it's going to be Sister Ginger, I do not know, Labatt, and Donna Linville. They will be the speakers. Registration opens April the 3rd, and the reason I want to talk, uh, let you know today is because registration did increase a little bit. Early registration is April the 3rd, did I say why? April, I'm sorry, April the 3rd through June the 26th is registration, early registration, and it is uh, $50. Late registration is $60. At the door is $70. If you want to go each day, just a session is $25. And I advise you, if you want to get, the, this happens every year, if you want to go to the conference and you want to stay at the hotel, it's always a blast, even though you live here, to stay at the hotel if you can. If you want to stay at the hotel, the hotel price is $115 a night, uh, and you have to give them the uh, Arizona Ladies Ministry, um, UPC, give them the group name when you call, and they'll give you the $115 discount. I advise you, if you want to, um, go the last day to book is the 29th and but you're not sure if you're going to stay book your room anyway because a lot of times it's easier to cancel than it is after the day to try to find a room i see it all the time every year people you got any rooms you got any rooms anybody not knowing i need a room i need a room so we always book a room even if we end up canceling it but book a room book a room the uh the room and registration both open april the third so i'm letting everybody know now so if you want it you need to go ahead and book the room. I don't do that anymore because I did it before and I had a lot of people cancel and the rooms were in my name. And so I had to do a lot of canceling. So I let everybody, you just do your own booking for your own room. Also, during that conference, they always set aside and pull out what is called a pure conference. And it goes on the same time that the ladies conference goes on. And it is for eight little girls ages 12 and up, more like teenager girls age 12 and up. And it's always a blast. And Sister Ginger, what's my last name? Labat will be Labatt. speaking at that. So they always have it, like I said, that around the same time, they just pull the young girls out and they do the separate um, thing for them. It is pure conference. And even though it's called a conference, it goes on the same time as the regular ladies conference. If you can make it, even if you only just make <laughs> one service, I'd advise you to go. It, it's fantastic. It's a wonderful time. Rochelle had a wonderful time last year, and I missed it. I had to go out of town. But um, it's, it's, a, it's awesome if you can go. Like I said, if you can 
If you're not sure if you're going to stay, it's easier to go ahead and book your room now when they open up and then just cancel it later than to wait to the last minute and decide you want to go and you get you don't get a room. I don't know how many rooms are going to be available. Like I said, it's a different hotel this time, so I'm not sure how it all is going to pan out. But I'd advise you as soon as April the 3rd hits, get your room because they get gone fast. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. All right. Govern yourselves accordingly. This, these uh, events that we have, such as uh, conferences, I encourage you to go. Like she said, it was actually two years ago, I think, that Rochelle got the Holy Ghost oh, there. Oh, that's right. It was two years. And it just went by so fast. But, but two years ago, Rochelle went to the uh, conference, and she wanted the Holy Ghost. As a matter of fact, she told us she was going to get it. And she got the Holy Ghost. Praise God. God, you know, he says everybody that asks gets it. Right? God's not stingy about that. You need that to get to heaven. You need that to be a part of your life. You need that to refine you. The Holy Ghost refines us. It makes us what God wants us to be. It helps us to be that. Because in and of yourself, we're just, we, we have weakness and flaws and those kind of things. But the Holy Ghost is that closest relationship that God's ever designed. Of any kind of creature. Any kind of being. Because He's living on the inside. He exampled it and then He gave us the chance to experience it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, today we are we are continuing the second part of our uh, what we started last week uh, about prayer. The how, the who, the what. I think I might have got that wrong, you know, in the wrong order, but of prayer. And uh, today I want to deal with this these next two phrases: who art in heaven. And hallowed be thy name. Like last week we talked about our Father and the significance of God being our Father. Significant. Because everything that God says a Father is, He is. And when we think of Him, we go to Him in prayer, this is a concept that we're to have. Praise God. Of who He is. What He says a Father's responsibility is, He certainly takes that responsibility on. Because whatever God tells you to do, whatever God instructs you and I to do, God does it. Yeah. He's example it. Right. Praise God. And we can go to God in prayer in full faith, knowing that God is all that He yeah. uh, said He would be. Yeah. Father, He says that if, if, you're, if a man doesn't take care of his home, he's worse than an infidel. I mean, somebody, I know you've heard that term probably in, in with the terrorists, right? <laughs> an infidel. But an infidel means somebody that has rejected God and has walked away from the faith. God says that if you don't take care of your family, that's what you are. So God says he takes care of his family. If by implication, he'd be infidel for not doing it, God certainly isn't that. He imposes on himself by you calling him father that he's going to take care of you. And so that should give us confidence when we go to him with anything. Right. doesn't matter what it is. He has promised to take care of me. Amen. And that's the hope that we have. That's, that's why you get to, to pray in confidence. He wants to take care of me. Amen. But the way it works, yes, God knows everything. Some people try to rationalize and analyze these things. They say, well, God knows it. Why don't I have to pray? That's the way it works. Right, right. That door will open when you put the key in it. But it just you might have the key, and there's a lock that it fits. But until you actually put the key in there and turn it, it doesn't open, right? Mm-hmm. God says you have to pray. You have to talk to Him. I was, uh, I, I called somebody last week and uh, they gave me some advice. I mean, and you know, the, the advice was simply this. Have you prayed about that? I've thought about it. And I'm talking to God throughout the day. But about that specific thing, I didn't pray. I didn't say, God, I need you to do this or... Thank you for something you've done. I like to start my prayers off with thanksgiving. I mean, the Word of God shows us that. You know, it just sets the tone, sets the pace, sets everything right, sets your mindset right. Right, right. But I said, you know, I I haven't actually prayed about it. I've been thinking about it. I've been praying, but I haven't prayed about that. And when I did, I mean, just simply, I I just started spending a little bit of time praying about it. Then God shifted some things in me. Isn't that something? (laughs) Shifted some things in me and all of a sudden I started seeing things a little differently. 
And that's how God will do. Yeah. God will answer. Yeah. But we have to pray. Yeah. Sometimes people say, well, it doesn't, I'm not going to pray about it. No, you need to pray about it. That's right. That's right. You need to pray about it. But pray in faith. The Bible says the prayer of faith. Yeah. You just go, well, God, you know what's going on. You see how bad it is and it's terrible. It ain't going to get any better. <laughs> you haven't prayed. You've kind of told God what was on your mind, but you haven't prayed. So there's a way to do this that God says, slow down, stop, hold on. There's a way to do it. And the disciples, they got this hint, this clue. And they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. We want to do it effectively. Hmm. Praise God. So today we're going to take who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, so who art in heaven, in order to, for his location to have meaning. This is important. In order for his location, he says, who art in heaven, our Father who art in heaven. In order for that location to have meaning, you must have an understanding of who he is. And what or who um, uh, Jesus is, the one speaking to his disciples, what he's comprised of. You have to understand his identity to understand his location. It makes sense when he says this, when you understand who he is. Praise God. You know, to really appreciate the significance of Jesus in the flesh, telling his disciples, he's, he's a man like they are, looking them in the eyes and telling them this, our Father, which art in heaven. You have to understand who, in fact, Jesus really is. To adequately comprehend this, we have to go back to the Old Testament. There is one scripture in particular in the Old Testament that describes who Jesus is better than all of them. Because Jesus physically was not in the Old Testament. He was born in Bethlehem, as you all know the story. But there's one scripture in particular that describes him better than them all. Isaiah 9 and 6. Now, I want to do something a little different here. I want to go to Isaiah 9 and 6. I'm going to read that scripture. But then I'm going to break that scripture apart and juxtapose it, fit it together with John 6, 3.16. That's good. So we'll do that this morning and just try to set the tone for who Jesus is. Right. Knowing who Jesus is is one of the most important things. Right. Because, you know, it's one thing to say words. But it's another thing to have an understanding of what's behind those words. And that's what it matters to God. You can just say things and just read a text or just read the Lord's Prayer and get nothing from it. But when you understand the significance of who it is, praise God, it changes everything. Your words mean something. What's behind your words is what matters to God. God's into the heart of it all. He's into the heart. He's not fooled by words. He's not fooled by facades. God's into what's in your heart. Amen. So he says in Isaiah 9 and 6, we've read this and you hear this during Christmas time. Uh, you know, you hear this quite a bit, but this is a powerful scripture. Right, yeah. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Five descriptive Amen. names of God. Five ways to describe who was coming in Bethlehem. 740 or 50 years prior to his coming. This prophecy is given by Isaiah. Not knowing what he's talking about. But just as the Spirit of God moved on him, he wrote these words. Impactful and powerful. Now, unto us... A child is born. For God so loved the world. Unto us a son is given. That he gave his only begotten son. Now listen. In Isaiah. Son is just connoting. The maleness of his gender. That's it. It's not like God the son up there. This is the way some people have framed it. Thinking of a trinity. That there's three in heaven. Three separate individuals. They think that God the Son came down. No, no, this is not what this is saying. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, it just says a son is given. It says a male is given. Now we'll tie it together in a minute. But here in John 3, 16 it says that he gave his only begotten son. His only. Everybody say only. Only. Means one. Right? We all got that, right? 
So only begotten son, there's no other way to have a son. Right? The only way you can have a son technically and, and to be accurate is it has to be begotten. It's come from you. And so God says, I only have one son. And then the Bible says this about it. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Now in the Old Testament, there's no real word for Godhead. It's not used, it's not a phrase, not a theological phrase that's used. But certainly it's conveyed in this thought, in this word. Now if the government is on your shoulders, what sits on your shoulders? Your head. Your head. The government, the headship of something is going to be on his shoulders. What a powerful concept. Because in Colossians 2 and 9 it says, For in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Praise God. We know that that almighty God was who was coming. That's what he's saying. He's going to say this over and over in several different phrases. But the Bible says, His name shall be called Wonderful. Yes. Counselor, yes. the mighty God, yes. the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's called the everlasting Father. He says that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The only one that can give everlasting life is the everlasting Father. All right. yes. Yes. The everlasting Father. Now here, as he's described, let's go back to the top of this, this verse. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. It's a son, it's a male. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting. The son that's coming is the everlasting Father. Right, right, right. How can that be? John 4 and 23 will open this up. John 4 and 23 and 24 says, But the hour cometh, Jesus talking to the lady at the well, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Amen. Praise God. And then he says in verse number 24, once again, there's no verses in the Bible. This was added after the fact. God is a spirit. Yes. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. If I'm going to worship God, he wants me to do it in spirit and truth. Now, in spirit, his spirit, his Holy Spirit. The Bible lets us know in John 3 and 5, except a man be born of water and of spirit, both are necessary, are required. He cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. The Father seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. How is that, how is that worked out? How is that, how is that actually practically carried out in the Word of God? Well, in Acts chapter 19 and verse 4, Paul is standing with some people, some disciples of John the Baptist. He's met and he asks these people, you know, have you received the Holy Ghost? They said no. He says, how are you baptized? They say, after John's baptism, then he gives them a clue as to what's where they're at. Right. He's going he's to inform them, enlighten them. He says, John verily baptized with baptism of repentance, saying that people, that they should believe on him that should come after, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. And when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues. So they worshipped him yes. in truth. Mm -hmm. In spirit and in truth. The Father seeks such to worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Yeah. What matters is when you're right with God. What matters is doing things the way that God has asked us to do it. And so in understanding who Jesus is, you can then understand why and the significance of him saying to his disciples, our Father, which art in heaven. When you pray. Because God's in heaven, there's some things that, that He's not subject to. Because God's in heaven, there's some things that, that don't hinder Him. Because God's in heaven, there's some things that He can do that nobody else can do. Right. Mm -hmm. It establishes that beyond the limitations of this world, my God exists. Uh, yes. Praise God. Yes. Yes. He exists. 
The Bible says he sits on the circle of the earth. It's he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are grasshoppers that stretches out the heaven as a curtain and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. God does this. Praise God. The skies, the Bible says he stretches them out. He sits on the circle of the earth. It's under him. It's under his control. And when you think of God like that when you go to pray, that all the problems that I'm having here, maybe it's with a person or it's in a locale, it's a situation that I'm dealing with, God is greater than all that. He sits atop that. He has the power to change what I cannot. He has the power to go inside and enter to me. Change situations that I can't right. even begin to touch. Amen, that's right. He's above it all. And it, you know, it's a good way to envision, imagine your God being above it all, above the fray, yeah. above all these things that tie me down, these things that hinder me. You know, I said last week, you, your problems, I heard somebody say this, but you know, what's external does not bring stress. What brings stress is how you respond to what's external. What you think about it, how you fear it, how you anticipate it, how you make it inevitable. And so how you respond to it is what causes stress. Because honestly, if you didn't know and things are happening, then you don't know. You don't turn on the worry machine. Anybody have one of those? <laughs> you don't turn that machine on because you don't know. Sometimes we have to go back into that blissful state when we begin to uh, put our trust in God. I have to turn. David says, at what time I'm afraid because he was human too. And he turned the worry machine on. He had one of those way back then. You know? But he turned that thing on. But he says, at what time I'm afraid I will trust in God. In other words, I'm going to let go of my understanding, my analytical ability, and what I'm, what I'm stressing over. I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to trust in God and say he is greater. He sits on top of the earth. And he's not bothered. He's not moved. One man said years ago, there was a, a conference in Washington. He just said, this old black preacher got up and he just said, God's not in trouble. Everybody's worried. Everybody's concerned. Big gathering in Washington. He just says, God's not in trouble. Just remind everybody. God's not in trouble. You may be in trouble. Your situation might have you dead. It may have you stressed out. Maybe going to the hospital worried with heart pains. But guess what? God's not in trouble. God's hands aren't cuffed. God's not. His power isn't diminished. He's still as free as he's ever been. And he can't even handle what you can't handle. Praise God. You might feel weak, but God's not weak. God's not anemic. God's not asking for help. He's not on his last. No, God is as strong as he's ever been. Yeah. And it never changes. Glory. Amen. And guess what? He's your father. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. That's what matters. That's what God says. Bring it home here. Don't make me some far off person, but bring it home. Make me your father. Understand who you're talking to. Understand that there's a relationship here. If I'm powerful and I, if I've committed myself to taking care of you, there's not a problem that you have that's too big for God. There's not a situation that you face that God can handle. There's not something that's too hard for God. God. He looked at Abraham and said, Is anything too hard for God? Before he said to his, to, he said to Abraham, Your 90 year old wife is about to conceive. But he asked the question, is anything too hard for God? When you, when you think this way, praise God, you can then go to God in prayer. See, Jesus was setting them up to be able to pray. They said, Jesus, show us how to pray. He says, okay. And he set them up, giving them the mindset, praise God, to be able to go into prayer with faith. I want to go into prayer with faith. I want to go into prayer believing God. I want to go into prayer, you know, just totally believing that my God is bigger than everything else. You see, he's better than every option I've tried. He's better than every situation I've gone to, every person, every solution I've tried. God is greater than those things. And when I go to him in prayer, I'm going to the best solution. You know, they said, when you tried everything else, try Jesus. I want to try him first because I believe he's the best. That's right. Praise God. Amen. As such, he's in heaven. He is omnipotent. It's easy to believe that. When you, when you see him as in heaven, it's, it's easy to believe that he's all powerful. Mm -hmm. And he's omnipresent, the Bible says. 
There's nowhere that I'm at that God is not. There's nowhere I can be. There's no situation. I can't be so desolate, so isolated from everything else and everybody else. And even in my feelings. Because sometimes you can be in a crowded room and be all alone. Absolutely. Suicide is at an all-time high. Yeah. I mean, just about in every demographic you can think of, mm-hmm. it's very high. Bible says in the last days, men's hearts will fail them for fear. Well, people are killing themselves. And that's always been a phenomenon that was, that's been throughout the, the course of history. But it's happening. A lot of people. But what gets you to the place that you decide to do that is when you think there's no other option. That's a lie from the devil. Because if all you see is what he's showing you. You see, you don't get somewhere in your mind without Satan playing with you. He's doing this 24-7 to everybody. If you have nobody to turn to, or if you have nothing on the inside of you to challenge what he's saying, that he's going to win that battle every time. Yes. But if there's something on the inside of you that says, I'm going to trust in the Lord, yes. praise God. I don't care what you're showing me on the outside. I don't care what you're saying to me. I don't care what life is showing me, what everybody else might be saying. I'm going to trust in God. Hallelujah. Because he's stronger. He's, stronger. he's better. Yes. He's mightier. Yes. He's not here on earth bound by all the things that bind me. Right. Right. He's Come above on. it all. Right. He's above it all. Come on, praise God. He's above it all. He's omnipresent. Right. He's right. always with me. And here's the thing. He's omniscient. There's, something, there's nothing that you know that he doesn't. There's nothing that's exclusive knowledge that he, he's void of. Right. Right, right. He understands. Praise God. And that's, this is the thing. God understands. He gets you. Hmm. He gets you. He understands what makes you tick. He understands the maturations of your mind. How you go from one thought to another. He understands all that. He sees it. And he knows what has you. Where you're at even now. As I'm talking to you, God knows where you, he knows what's his, he knows the course of the thoughts that have brought you to where you're at right now. Right. Those troubling thoughts, those things that make you think that it just simply can't change. It's going to be this way forever. The devil's a liar. Yeah. I'm talking to you right now. He's a liar. Yeah. He's a liar. It will change. God can change it. God is able to do anything. God can break the chains that bind you this morning. Yeah. Praise God. There's nothing too hard for God. Yeah. Nothing. There's nothing too hard for God. And when we have enough faith to push through the fear and all the other things that have come against us to hem us in, then we get to see God's awesome power at work. He's where we desire to go. He's above every problem we deal with. Everything that we could possibly be challenged with is under him. Disciples were in that boat. They were there all night long. By intention of Jesus. Here's the thing. Sometimes, you know, we think that God, we think that, you know, God should never allow us to go through something that's challenging. He understands the benefit of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's why, you know, he feeds 5,000 people and the Bible says he constrains his disciples to get on the boat. So they go over. As they're going over, he goes up into the mountain to pray. And the Bible says he's watching them. All night. Watching. As they toiled. Meaning they were rowing, but the wind was blowing. So they were rowing right into the wind and going nowhere. But the wind got worse. Storm came up on the sea. The Bible says they were scared for their life. There was no lights. It was dark. And they were scared for their life. But Jesus thought it was very necessary that they encounter that kind of storm. Hmm. These are fishermen. They were well used to being on the waters when they were choppy and rough. But this was different. Yeah. And sometimes in our life when it gets really rough, storms, winds are blowing, you find yourself saying, this is different. I imagine the Apostle Paul thought his was different too because he heard the stories, no doubt, of 
of the disciples. Mm -hmm. Just a night on the boat with Jesus or without him. And then their situation was over. But here Peter or here Paul is 14 nights and he's a prisoner. He can't say nothing that influences anybody. They're not listening to him because he's a prisoner. Mm -hmm. Bible says the captain, because he was experienced, disregarded what Paul said, and they decided to sail anyway. After all, we're just going to hug the coast and go around. But the Bible says a strong wind came and took that boat out. Mm -hmm. Everybody's scared to death for 10 days. No one ate. Then finally, 14th night, the Bible says that an angel came and visited Peter, or Paul rather, while he was on that boat, and told him that I'm giving you everybody that's selling with you. He started off as a prisoner on that ship. And he became the pastor of that ship. Because the Bible says he came out and says, eat. I know you're afraid. I know you think you're going to die. But I'm going to give you some bad news. And I got some good news too. Don't you have people do that? I got some good news and some bad news. He says, the ship ain't going to make it. It's going to be destroyed. Now that, to me, would be the worst. It's like being on a plane, right? Yeah. And there's a bunch of turbulence and everything. And somebody comes, to the captain over the loudspeak says, Hey guys, the plane ain't going to make it. But he says, but you all are. Everybody's going to make it. He says, if you can swim, swim. If you can't, grab a piece of the boat. Everybody's going to make it to shore. Some people didn't believe him. They got the little lifeboats and they started letting them down. And Paul says to the captain, cut the lifeboats. Lifeboats are designed for such a situation. Right? Mm -hmm. But he says, cut those lifeboats. The captain who disregarded what he had to say when he said, I think there's going to be some bad situations happen if we take this voyage. They didn't listen to him at the beginning. Now they're all ears. And the captain orders, cut those lifeboats with him. So they cut the lifeboats off and everybody's stuck there now to listen to what Paul said. But you know something? As improbable as what God's saying to you may seem to be. You think in your mind, I need to do the opposite. God says, do this. Yeah. Right. 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 Many times in the Word of God, God says something opposite than logic. Yeah. It's true. Because He controls it. He's up there. Yeah. He right. controls all of this. Yes. And so he can, he can handle it any way He wants. And see, this is the faith that God wants us to have. That God can handle my situation. I have to trust Him. Right. And sometimes in life, you're going to be forced. Sometimes, like right now, somebody's forced to trust Him. You don't have a choice. You can't do it the way you want to do it. And you're just forced to trust Him. Yes. But I'm telling you, the greatest things that happen in life, the greatest circumstances that you see you're hemmed in by, is those times... When you can't do it on your own. And you need God. Yes. And he does. He says do it the opposite way. But the Bible lets us know that every single one of those people. I think it's 273. The Bible gives us the number. Every single one of those people made it to shore. Like he said. But let me tell you. It was messy. They all were wet when they got there. But they made it. Amen. Lord. Listen, I don't know what you're going through today. I just feel like a little shift in this message. But I, I don't know what you're going through. Where you're at in particular, God does. That's right. And I've come to encourage somebody. I, I've come to tell somebody. It doesn't matter how crazy it sounds. It doesn't matter how it seems. What God says is the best solution. Praise God. Even though it doesn't make sense, it's the best solution. Because God knows exactly. He sees the road clearly. Praise God. He sees the path. He knows the future. We look through a glass darkly, but God sees a perfect road. Amen. And it's straight and it's clear. Praise God. And God wants to be the one to take you by the hand when you're so afraid to even take one step and lead you to where you He's taking it. Praise God. You don't have to go alone. You're not going. You're not moving alone. When you're trusting God, you're not moving alone. You put your hand in His hand. Amen. And you're That's allowing right. God to move you and to push you and to drive you and to lead you. It's the best thing you can possibly do. It might seem scary. It might feel scary. 
But when you're trusting God, that's the best place to be. Amen. The safest place on the yes. planet yes. is in the will of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Regardless of what it looks like on the outside. Because he has some unseen hands Amen. that do a job of protecting and leading and guiding like nothing else can. <clears throat> Let's stand this morning. I don't want to belabor the point anymore, but yes. somebody needs to pray. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody needs to talk to God this morning. Somebody needs to understand. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. That my God sits above it all. Yes. My God is stronger and he's powerful. Yes. And he's my father. Amen. Hallelujah. He's committed to loving and taking care of me. And he sees exactly where... He's not ignoring where I'm at. This is the thing. He's not ignoring where you're at. He sees it perfectly. You know what? He knew it before you got there. He knows where you're going to be tomorrow. He can see the smile on your face. He can see where everything has changed. God knows what He's doing. It's up to us to trust Him. What time, David says, I am afraid... I will trust in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God is calling for you to trust Him. Not to necessarily figure it out with your noodle. You can only do so much of that. But then when there's some components of it that you don't understand, God's saying, trust me. Trust me. But talk to me. Trust me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. These altars are open. And uh, if you want to talk to me at your seat, you feel free to do that. Because I, I, just, I just know that somebody needs to talk to God. I, I, I just feel this morning that God, God's waiting to hear from somebody. You know, before the problem started, God was waiting to hear from you. God knew you'd be here this morning. God knew what you'd be here this morning. And God knew what your heart was going to feel. God's waiting for you to talk to Him this morning. Like I, I relayed when I first started today, I something that I had overlooked praying about. I had the worry machine on full blast. Yes, yes, God. But I, I, I really didn't pray about it. I was praying about other things, but I, I this one thing I didn't pray about. And worry machine was going, and I, I reached out and talked to somebody. The Bible says, "Brother sharpens brother." Iron sharpens iron like brother sharpens brother. Sometimes we need somebody just to remind you. That's what I'm kind of doing here today. Right, right, right. Has you hemmed up? Has the worry machine on full blast? Making so much noise you can't hear anything else. It's time to pray about this specifically. Talk to God. He's waiting for that conversation. He's waiting for that conversation. No matter how many times you've had it before. No matter how impossible. No matter who's told you it's impossible. No matter who's who's put those chains and wrapped another layer around you. Making you think you're hemmed in. In an impossible situation. I'm encouraging you. I'm inviting you. Let's talk to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. He's in this place. He, he's never changed. He's never stopped being as strong as he's always been. He's not in trouble. His power is as strong and as sharp as it was when he says, let there be light and light hath appeared from nothing. That power is still here in this place this morning. (laughs) And God wants to handle what you can't. He says, cast all your care upon him. For one reason, one very important reason, He careth for you. Hallelujah. I'm inviting you this morning to do that. Whether it's at this altar or at your seat, I'm inviting somebody right now to open up your heart and say, God, I'm tired of with this worry. I'm tired of all this, this turmoil. I'm tired of all this stress. I'm tired of taking this thing and trying to handle it on my own and being frustrated. God, I'm talking to you.
lift your heart to him. Begin to talk to him right now. Hallelujah. He's waiting for the conversation. Hallelujah. He's bringing some comfort. He's bringing some peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 